Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we're on the day that falls between, this year anyway, falls between Black Friday and the Solemnity of Christ the King. And I think those two significant dates are a good uh, framework for a reflection on this gospel and the meaning uh, of our Lord's teaching in relation to the great solemnity which we're about to celebrate tomorrow, which is the culmination of the liturgical year, ending with this solemnity of Christ the King tomorrow. And so we'll, you'll hear about that tomorrow in, in the Sunday homily. But today's gospel in which the Sadducees who deny the resurrection try to trap Jesus with the words of Scripture points out then in our Lord's response uh, how we Christians are called to live what I'm going to uh, coin now as the pontifical life. And when you hear that word pontifical, you're probably immediately going to think of the Pope and some uh, very ornate ceremonies, but I mean it in the sense of referring to the bridge. And Christ is the bridge. He is the mediator between God and man, or between man and God, because he took our nature in order to create that, that bridge that allows us to traverse from our fleshly existence in time to this glorious existence in eternity which awaits us and which our Lord affirmed in today's gospel. Speaking of the life to come, describing the children of God who are called to this life, he says they can no longer die. They are like angels. They are the children of God. They are the ones who will rise. Those who will rise will traverse the bridge, and Christ is the bridge. And therefore, it's fitting to reflect because we're so wrapped up in the, I'm going to call it a spell in the sense of, you know, the wicked witch kind of spell. The world is under a spell. It's under the spell of this illusion of uh, absolute materiality. It's the only thing that most people are conscious of, at least it's, it's it, our culture. It's the only thing really our culture, or I shouldn't say the only thing, it's, it's not good to always exaggerate, but our culture is hyper-focused on time, material, the present life, and does it, makes, makes, a, makes it a point maybe not consciously, but you, if you analyze the culture, there's very little reference to death, especially in America. We, on the one hand, promote to children games of violence and destruction and killing. Some of the most popular video games are nonstop slaughter. But the reality of death is not really addressed because you just hit reset and play another game. When in reality, you know, we all will face a final terminal, no more reset point. And then after that, there's not much thought given to what happens. And that's why today's gospel is so important. That's why tomorrow's feast is so important. To regard Christ, who is the pontiff, the bridge that connects us to a life that never ends. Christ is super temporal. And his, his relevance to us spans time. It connects us to eternity. And yet it's not simply beyond. It's also here and now. Our Lord is with us, present at this very moment, in this place, in the tabernacle, sacramentally, in the host in which he wills to be present to us, 
as he was when he walked, not exactly as he was, but in as real a way as when he walked the earth and sat with the apostles at the Last Supper and instituted the Eucharist to extend his presence among us until he comes again in glory at the end of time. And so he bridges for us. And his, his interaction in the world wasn't, didn't begin when he took flesh in the womb of Mary at the Annunciation. And we're about to begin Advent, so another point of connection to this reflection. But in today's Gospel, he refers to uh, the conversation between Moses and himself in the image of the bush. The voice that Moses heard is the voice of Christ, the eternal word speaking from a bush, a bush that burned and yet wasn't consumed. And we, we often refer to that image as an image of Mary and her perpetual virginity, that she could give birth and yet remain a virgin. But we could also see it as an image of our existence in the flesh, which would be represented by the fire. You know, our flesh is consumed. At some point, it will return to dust. And yet, we don't cease to exist. So our, our true being is both as, as Christ, in, in the eschatological sense, is here and yet not yet, or his, re, his kingdom is here but not yet completely realized. Same with our uh, existence. Just like that bush that burns and isn't consumed, we have an immortal soul. So our flesh will go the way of all material things. It will pass away, but it will be resurrected. And then it will be as a Christ described to the Sadducees today. Uh, we will be like angels. We will not die ever. And so, you know, we Christians living in a, in a world that's so obsessed with the material uh, have to hold fast to these promises, the truth, the eternal word gave us, uh, that if we remain with him, then though we will die in the flesh, we will not die in eternity. And those, unfortunately, who are so invested in material that they don't unite themselves to Christ will go the way of that sad king in the first reading who shrivels up and dies when he realizes all his material uh, aspirations have been thwarted, thwarted by the children of God who he uh, persecuted and abused. And so these are images and truths, historical facts that are handed down to us uh, through the church that Christ the King instituted to be the instrument of his, the manifestation of his kingdom, which, as I say, bridges time and eternity. And so to, let us ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was instrumental in the realization of that hypostatic union of the human nature, which she provided, and the divine nature, which the eternal word provided, uh, which came together in our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the king of kings, and whose kingdom uh, we seek here and now, and pray that uh, it will be more and more manifest so that more and more people will wake up from this spell that they're under that uh, was epitomized in the frenzy of consumerism that took place yesterday, but which will amount to nothing if it's if not 
saved by Christ the King. May the Queen in heaven intercede for all the children of Adam, that they may be all children in eternity of God. Praise be Jesus and Mary.